need a medical marijuana recommendation like I did, do what I did. CanacareDocs.com. Compassionate, compliant, and confidential. Go where I went, Mike Can, to get my medical recommendation in Massachusetts. CanacareDocs.com. If you're suffering like I am from back pain, or maybe you have MS, post-traumatic stress, seizures, AIDS, cancer, glaucoma. If you're suffering from pain like I am daily, call CanacareDocs.com. It's a much safer way to go. No opiates. You want medical legal cannabis? CanacareDocs.com. Convenient. Nine Massachusetts locations. Peabody, Quincy, Waltham, Brockton, Stoughton, South Dennis, Cape Cod, Fall River, and Worcester. Also, I forgot, Seekonk. Also in the states of Delaware, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Maine, and coming soon to New Hampshire and New York, it's CanacareDocs.com. Get your medical recommendation. Get legal. CanacareDocs.com. Welcome. Kind of quiet in here today. The young jerks. A lot of people in here, but uh, the tension you can feel it. Ooh. I'm Mike Can or Mike Crawford, whichever name you want to call me now. And I'm Lauren Pespiza, and this is the Young Jerks here. I'll let you decide what you call me. How's that? Uh, uh, we got we have regular callers. We know every week. If you uh, have an opinion on how you want to call me now, whether it's Mike Crawford or Mike Can, you can definitely weigh in on that today. I think no one get mad at you on that one. What? On that answer, like you know, the, the, there's going to be a, so a debate today, and uh, oh yeah, right, right. If you want to go like on something that no one really is going to get mad about, <laughs> right, right, on on the name. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Because I go by both names now. I guess I don't. Oh, know. so you can say the un un un. un like I don't know. Like I, I, you can have, I was Mike Camp for a while person. doing this show, and then uh, and Mike Crawford and Dig Boston now. Yeah. So you have to separate identities to really go as a separate person to voice unpopular opinions, though. Now you're the same person. So. Yeah. Whatever way you want to call me. <laughs> you're just yeah. You're now you're integrating in I the guess process, so. integrating into a whole. Mike Crawford can. <laughs> I get maybe that's the campaign slogan in the future. Right. But uh, it was 617-500-7100. Oh, we'll be taking calls today. But we have a, a, a tense, a tense. This is very tense. I, I got yelled at coming up the stairs, and my phone's be beeping. <laughs> and not normally I get yelled at by an elected official and not think that they're wrong. I don't think this person's wrong for yelling at me today, maybe. <laughs> so we'll start right or there. And... So we're going to start the show. We have, as we've been advertising, we have Nadim Mazin, who is a city councilor from Cambridge, who uh, a story has just come out called Hamas on the Charles that makes a lot of allegations against oh, yeah. Nadim, who's one of the only uh, elected Muslims in the state of Massachusetts, maybe the only one. Um, and look how many Muslims we have here. I look at all the issues we have, and I look at Nadim, and I just don't buy any of it. I'm just reading the story, and it went viral, and it's on Breitbart, and I, I, I do look at it as, like, hate speech. I invited Sam in because I saw the story, and I saw it being promoted, and I wanted to hear his side of it, but I almost wonder maybe we shouldn't even had it, had him in, and, and I tried to be independent on it and be fair on it, and I, I, I was going to let these two just kind of talk about it, but the more and more I read about it this week... Um, maybe Nadim's right, and I just want to introduce Nadim first and foremost, and uh, have him respond, and and w at w whichever way he wants to choose to do that right now. Uh, th thanks, Mike. I, I, you know, I now that we're both here, we can we can both you know hold our own on on equal footing. I appreciate you giving the the intro. I I, I do think that APT APT Americans for Peace and Tolerance has a track record of an unusual level of uh, hate speech and. Um, Islamophobic vitriol. They, in my experience, and their predecessor organizations, Camera and the David Project, uh, have thrown everything to the wall against any Muslim willing to show leadership. And, and for me, it looks like a project aimed at making sure Muslims can't lead. And if you look at the last generation of Muslims against whom suit was posed, uh, many of them have remained you know, leaders in this country. Many of them have gone on in service projects um, for their own communities, their own American communities, may I underline, and, uh, and have done well and have not sowed violence and have uh, continued to serve with dignity. And yet, uh, the, the work of AD, ATP and its predecessor organizations uh, uh, was not trivial uh, as an impact in their lives. In fact, uh, I, I think the, 
um, emotional impact, the financial impact of, of having to launch and then defend against libel suits, um, and to clear one's good name is significant. And certainly my time is better used working for affordable housing and economic development. Uh, in fact, I was just at a, at a White House summit for economic development in Baltimore, uh, rather than thinking about defending myself against trivialities. And, and every single innuendo in this article against me is either uh, malicious, uh, false, or innuendo. And I can't see a single thing in that article that, that seems to claim that I myself have done anything wrong. They keep saying I'm associated with someone who's done something wrong. Well, I don't believe those either. But the article itself just doesn't have a high standard of journalistic integrity. And what's more than- Not at all. And Not at all. Looking at it, I'm like, was, it's a piece of trash. There was a lot of broken links, Steve, to the sources even that I couldn't It's misleading. Follow. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah, Some like, of the things, statements in it are just up. silly. It Don't you have an editor? Like, I'm going to introduce you right now. You're, we also have John Robbins uh, from CARE listening in. Uh, we're not interviewing him. That wasn't what we wanted today. But if he wants to weigh in on fact-checking related to his organization, he's free to do so. He's on the phone. Um, we also have yeah. Sam here. Thank you so much. Thank you. There's John. And we also have Sam, who I'm directing it towards, uh, Westrop, who I invited on the show. Uh, Americans peace and tolerance and I look at your organization I look at the name and I'm like you guys aren't peaceful or tolerant okay well let, let are me you start Sam by saying, are well, you Sam I think of myself as a pretty uh, pretty peaceful tolerant guy I think the first really thing to say here, really well hang on a second really let's, let's, actually, we'll talk about your let group. Me talk, let me first start by saying I agree with uh, Nadim that you know more Muslims should be engaged in the civic process we should see more Muslims standing for office more Muslims helping both American Muslims and Americans as a whole being a, a better more cohesive society where we have concerns and I think very reasonable concerns whatever you may think of our group is that care the Council on American Islamic relations of which Mr. Marzin is a director of the Massachusetts branch. CARE is an organization that both the Justice Department and the FBI have linked to terrorism, to Hamas. Uh, CARE is a notorious uh, uh, place for, for anti-Semitic uh, ideas, even the so anti-defamation are, are you saying that John and I are anti-Semites? Well, absolutely not. But okay, what then I what's your problem? Because you're not associated with CARE. You are a director of CARE. Yes, and, and our CARE Massachusetts chapter and our CARE national board and our CARE workers and our CARE colleagues are not anti-Semitic, have not been accused of anti-Semitism. Well, not I wish, been accused I wish of that were true. Really? Your executive director, Nihad Awad, has often spoken about the Jewish well, let's origin about, let's of senior about your organization. How, how? Now, even the Anti-Defamation League considers CARE to be at heart an anti-Semitic organization. There are thousands of wonderful Muslim organizations in this country who don't associate with care. In fact, 88% of Muslims in a 2011 Gallup poll said care does not represent their views. You don't represent American Muslims. I say you, your group, care does not represent American Muslims, and it shouldn't claim to. American Muslims aren't a monolith. I don't claim to exactly, represent yeah. Yeah. Muslims in, in almost any case, right? People right. come to me because they would like an opinion. I try to give a sense of what I think most Muslims might stand for when I can speculate, the same way that a non-Muslim may speculate about what most Muslims think. But for, for you to insinuate that this organization has an anti-Semitic <laughs> agenda, when this organization is mostly oriented around defending ourselves against people like you? No kidding. That is so uh, backwards and is in fact the right. worst yeah. double talk. Well, let's remember, it's, really not, it's not me. I'm yeah. not saying, uh, uh, it's not just me who's saying CARE is an anti-Semitic organization and a, uh, an organization linked to terror. It's the government. It's the anti-defamation uh, league. It's the Justice the ADL, Department. Actually, yeah. the ADL called you out. You, you guys, they, they, they the ADL doesn't out. like you guys. They say we, you guys are yes, crazy. We, we and you're extremists over, and we you're over mongers. Tactics, you're look, warmongers. Even the ADL. And the ADL, ADL is not exactly ADL is not a, weak. A Absolutely. We have, had, we have had disagreements with the ADL in the past. Then but I, if you're to cite the ADL's comments, if you speak. cite yeah, the ADL's right. comments on us, then you must acknowledge the AD, uh, ADL's comments on CARE, which it describes as an anti-Semitic organization we, and we, notes its links to terror. And you have, you Look, have, there's you, a you, very you, simple ADL point here. Look, you're risking, even, you're risking okay. collapsing into hysteria here. There's a very simple point. We have a public official whom I don't exactly know what he believes, but he stood on a, a progressive liberal uh, uh, platform when he, he ran for office. 
Mr. Marsden, you're currently a director of uh, an organization that is illiberal and regressive, that is connected to Hamas, an <laughs> anti-Jewish, genocidal do, do you terrorist group, and what which, we whose director do and senior care? officials have been arrested on terrorism charges and promoting anti-Semitic ideas. What, uh, so, so everything you just said is, is false, by the way, and I can just blanket false, but, but well, more importantly... the government importantly, and the ADL more, disagrees with it, it. Incorrect. I just saw a letter from Secretary Kerry, by the way, that basically said we were beyond reproach. I don't know how many times I can get the government to refute what you're saying before you realize that in, uh, you're in, you're it's entire, not the government. It's the FBI. It's the entire, Justice Department. Your entire can I, can I base. Wait here for a moment here? Sure. Yeah, because you can, I, John. I have pretty good knowledge of all these specific points. First of all, in, in regards to all the anti-Semitic accusations, which again are flagrantly wrong, I'd be really interested in your telling that to Yaakov Bender, for example, the executive director of our Philadelphia chapter, a practicing Orthodox Jewish gentleman who supports care in all of our work extensively and has done so for many years. <laughs> in regards to these. Slanderous things. First of all, the Department of Justice has never made any statements about care to that effect. You're referring to the FBI statements, uh, which the FBI issued specific guidelines in a memo to its field offices in 2009 saying, hey, please don't go to the events of these people who are severely critical of our practices anymore. Feel free to collaborate on them with civil rights issues, these kind of questions. Just but like they would with, just like, and let me just say something, just like they would with where I come from, normal or mass can or any marijuana reform group, any That's dissident right. group, it doesn't matter. They don't want to be co-opted. It's simple. It's it's any political group, really. Even Democrats and Republicans, they might even do that, too. So let's be That's serious right. about what that means. And you're That's dishonest right. about it, and that's my problem with you. You say Justice Department. It was a Justice Department like reprint of what the FBI was doing, and it's totally ridiculous bunk. No, you are not fact, a good when, journalist, yeah, buddy. When, you're, when not the, uh, journalist, you're not a good journalist, buddy. Dude. You're terrible, who Sam. When I'm other sorry, federal you're, you're, departments And how much money are you getting paid yeah, who, for your who, journalism? Who's paying you? I do journalism. I get paid like <laughs> peanuts around here, and I'm like the number one guy. Mike. And you, you, you get paid a lot of money, don't you? Or, no, actually, you don't. Your boss does, or you collect money. I, you know, how much money is going to your organization? Your hate speech organization. Mike, sure. I have actual questions. Who Go does who do who does pay you? Uh, and them? Um, the group I work for is is funded by a various mix of private donors, as many non-profits. And are like they who? are they on? Do you have a who? like? A, you know, can you name you some know, names as, here? As platforms I'm, go, this isn't the most objective. I think there are facts to be discussed here. I think. Uh, well, yeah. those Mr. are facts Marzen, that people I should know. know. So, so, who so, who are you? I was discussing. What about? I tell you no, what I'm not. I have I'm actual not, questions. Wait, wait. I, I tell you what I'm not. I'm not a publicly elected official. And that's the key point here. Mr. Marzen is a publicly elected official, and thus he should be held to account. And I'm sure he would ag agree with that, that he should be judged by the associations he keeps. And I, the I was just held up for election. I, 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 it's the ultimate accounting. Right, exactly. I, and, and my so, issues, by the way, a $15 minimum wage, yeah. economic development in a city with a, a, an income inequality coefficient similar to that of a, a Zimbabwe, uh, great wealth, an ability to hold people up, a need for a better educational equity, a need for conversations on race in this city, and in this region, this is the work I do. Mm -hmm. The work I do well, is beyond. And, and, and congratulations. Exactly. Uh, I, I, exactly. I, I applaud that, and I'm, I'm sure many other people do. You do. Think, do you why think this, why this conversation is so useful, and why it could be so useful, is because this is a chance to actually hear what you think and to hear what you think of the kind of ideas that what, Care stands what, for. What I so, think, as another example, well, well, you hold, run hold a on. small group mm -hmm. called Mass Muslims. I started Mass Muslims. Wonderful. It, the, the, the idea behind it sounds fantastic. What's the idea behind it? To promote civic engagement for, for Muslims. In the Massachusetts That's it. Area. That's all it is. Right, Use exactly. campaign Wonderful. tactics now, in order to reach Muslims just a few and months show ago. them into the Sorry, civic Eric. process. Good. Thank you. Well, thank you for setting that up. I, I applaud that. Just a few months ago, you promoted on your Facebook page, your group, Mass Muslims, promoted the viciously homophobic preacher Omar Suleiman, who calls homosexuality a disease and a repugnant, shameless sin. This are the kind of, these are the kind of ideas that we're worried about. Now, these are the kind of ideas we want to see publicly elected Muslim officials condemning and denouncing. Will you denounce Omar Suleiman? Look, and look, if CARE look, is an anti-Semitic organization, so, or those officials who do promote anti-Semitism, will you condemn them as well? Ho hold on. I don't know anything about Omar Suleiman. I've never been to an Omar Suleiman lecture. I don't know what he stands for. All I know is that someone with access to our Facebook page posted something that you don't like, and you're willing to make accusations against him the same way you're willing to make accusations against me. Now, you're implicitly untrustworthy, because you say things that fa aren't factually true. I want to know if you go after the so, Catholic so, priests that are against abortion. Do you do now, that? Like, like, come now, on. Now, I don't... Do you? I, you, you do can you? Know, you can uh, know do my, you, Sam? Do I what? Sorry, do you go after I, Catholic priests who speak uh, who do who public speak um, that are against abortion? Well, that's if they not what they're if paid they to do. I just want to know how far your extremism if goes. If they promote violent, bigoted ideas, then absolutely. Now, yes, now let me get back to your question people. to me. Yeah. I am not 
homophobic. Good. And I don't promote homophobia. So if ever I were to verify myself that we were promoting something that I wasn't in touch with, myself and the other board members of Mass Muslims or any other uh, organization I'm a part of would be uh, uh, willing and excited to promote tolerance in the ways that we currently do. The fact that you point at someone and you say they're bad for something that you found in their history or you've misinterpreted yeah. is not a, uh, you're not the arbiter of homophobia, you're not the arbiter of Islam, uh, 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 radical Islam. You simply throw anything against the wall, against anyone you don't like, and then try to connect no, people like to, hate, to, a hateful hateful audience. to a hateful audience hold, who hold, says things like throw, Cambridge is terrible, these of people. Anti-Semitism of, of, of big Bigoted, well, talk ideas. about bigoted. That's what we you want to talk about bigotry, uh, Sam? Like, look at the stem of the thing. The People's Republic of Cambridge idiots. How am I, how, like the the, the 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 comments that you're you know the audience that well, you're going well, hey, to. Hey, welcome to the internet. I mean, it's, it's a not just place the, full of It's not people, just the right? internet. Listen, when I post videos about fifteen dollar minimum wage, I don't get the stuff you're talking about. Okay, on this Facebook page, on your article, I'm seeing the nastiest part of the internet, and you all celebrate. Yeah. Yeah, we certainly don't celebrate any form. Is that bigotry. right? So when but you post, is, but can I can like, I say isn't one more this thing? such an can incredible shame that we thing? have this platform to discuss these ideas? And rather than say, well, hang on a second, one of my groups promoted a homophobic preacher that doesn't represent me, but I condemn it. Rather than no, say that I, or say, no, hey, I I'm a director of an organisation whose executive you. director promotes anti-Jewish hatred. I think that's wait, wrait, wrong. Wait, wait, the executive had that opportunity. Let's talk about Sam. Sam, hatred. Walter, whatever his name is. On your Facebook page, Cambridge Mass is enemy soil. Right, so I have no idea who this man is. He's not involved with my... I am not that, the That's the kind of support of you get, though. That's the kind of support you get. Right, sure. And, you know, so the executive well, director... Again, that, well, aren't, you, the aren't you creating really hate in your group? You your talk group about hateful? guilt by association. These are people writing comments I'm, on an I'm internet just throwing site. the mayor back Mr. at Marzin you. Mr. Marzin is a director of a legally incorporated body. Yes, there, is, there is a clear difference, the, the and there legally, is an obvious demand. The, the legally incorporated body has an executive director. He's on the phone with us. If you want to make accusations, you can make accusations about him, and you can make accusations okay. about me. I would be delighted to. Yeah. Okay, why don't you go ahead and we'll tell you how full of it you are. Okay, well, care is a recognized... I'm not talking about care. I'm talking about John. I'm talking about Nadim. You yeah, tell I'm me what about Nadim. I've done. You, right. you, and your whole Here's story was just bunk. Okay, like, so you talk about let's look at the other side. Say we sec- had a locally elected yeah, you know, politician. Yeah. I've asked say you we had a locally elected a Republican. Yeah. No, I'm yeah. answering it. Listen. Yeah. Say we had a locally elected Republican politician who it turned out was a director of an organization that was neo-Nazi or was affiliated with the Ku Klux Klan. Please. I think <laughs> people would call Please upon that politician to clarify your group, his relationship your buddy, with John, that body. You, it's you, exactly the same here. You, you I, we're not me. saying you, you Sam, are a bigot. We're like not saying G, that. You, but we're saying the organization with which you're affiliated is. I'm sorry. I'm we sorry. Call your, you article, your article, article has my cut. did... I want his mic cut. Hold on a second. Yeah, I'm just going to say this. Yeah, yeah. Wait, no, no. I'm just going to say this. Oh, my God. You know, priests molested boys. Does that mean the entire Catholic Church is guilty? Yeah. Yeah. No, like the, everyone uh, that, even the uh, patrons, and, like, and, you know, and that you're saying, like, Sam and the Italian, no, no, Sam's no, no, not, not, I'm just saying, against the Catholic Church. No, but I'm just saying, like, you can't blame the people that go to the Catholic but, Church. Yeah, yeah, they're the, 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 the victims religion. and everything. So you can't turn around and, and start, like, saying, okay. And the Catholic okay. people are not currently sort of being oppressed in other countries the way that Muslims are. Absolutely. The way that Palestinians are. So, the way that the, so I'm, I'm not sure why this is so difficult to grasp. Catholic priests. Uh, 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 do indeed speak out against what happens in the Catholic Church. Uh, listen, uh, listen, yeah, yeah. listen, listen, John, yeah. John, John made a good point. John made, John made a great point. John made a great point when, when we were all kind of in free-for-all mode. And he said, don't make this rhetorical. I asked you to tell yeah. me what yeah. I did wrong and Let's what John it, yeah. did right, wrong. Right, and right. you weren't able to you, do to the point. And, and you constantly, point. this is why I want your mic off. Because uh, we're going to take a break and we're going to give you your last bit. But uh, Sam, I, I just think uh, like we gave you your, your, your time. I'm just not interested because I look at your group. Yeah. You, it's you're full of it. You're, you're full of it. But you're you're funded. You got millions of dollars. Um, you 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 threw Nadim up. No, exactly. And, he's like, he's like a masterful debater that he's yeah. been paid. He's like, like a spokes, paid spokesperson. We're not. You know, it's just. 
Am I right. wrong? Am I wrong on that? Yeah, they're I gonna go. To they're out of here. Good. Uh, like, you want to ask them one question? Yeah, I just yeah. want to know where they came, who, what they did before this, well, who's paying them, and who's yeah, your, who's paying yeah, them? Yeah, they don't want to talk about that. Who, who's your homosexual yeah, friend? Yeah, Why yeah, you? Where yeah. the homosexuals you guys are saving now? Goodbye. Yeah, thank you. Who? Yeah, yeah where are your black friends? Yeah. <laughs> where yeah. the? Uh, where's the Rainbow Coalition you guys are representing? Yeah. I, I've had enough. Yeah. No, yeah, no, no. I can't have you guys talk. No, you're their tolerant. You're like, you, you're like the Ku Klux Klan over here. Yeah. We're gonna, get, we're gonna keep our show going. We get some muscle. Get these guys out of here. Get them out of here. Let's go them out, Freddy. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, are you shaking hands? You're gonna, you're gonna cut? No. Yeah. You, you, you're, you're full of it. And, and I think it's important. What's your? What's we your kicked them out. Here? This is Rhodes. Yeah. Rhodes. Rhodes. What, what you were saying there. What, what you were saying there was important there at the end. Are we on? Yeah. We're yeah, on. yeah. What you were saying there at the, at the end was important. You're saying where's you know, where's your gay friends? Where's your black friends? Right, because they they claim to represent this, these this, people, but this it's like, extremely like, like, broad <laughs> base like, of people. They? Instead, it's, it's a it's very a narrow, narrow perspective. like all white looking, all blue, same dudes, same age, same dress clothes. Like no, no diversity within the group themselves that they represent. And, and like, we're just, for everyone. It's, it's not just on no. the surface, right? No. The way the way they actually organize is well, only dude, against like I said, the same people and only with the same no, bigoted and, content. And the uh, whole idea of like all his talking points were just kind of like he was ready to just um not even uh, argue with you on the ideal, um, ideological no, point. Some roads. Roads. He was ready to argue the with you on The number one rule in this show yeah. is when I'm talking to you, you listen. Yeah. I, this is not my friggin' show. Okay. And Sorry. and he, this guy was not listening to me. And that's the number one. I already didn't like him. I, I, yeah, I, you Nadine, were loud very quickly. I, yeah, I already didn't like him all day and yesterday when I'm reading all this stuff. Okay, but... I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry I yelled. People I say don't yell, but sorry today. This is this is heated. I would have liked to hang them with their own words. I would have yeah. liked to find their hypocrisies, calculated, let them sit on, let them stew themselves a little bit. I would have liked to gotten to the point yeah. them. But I we like yelled we, them off I the like show. I like we drove them off. I mean, it's okay. I just, they we, we they probably couldn't. Out. They couldn't have held it down. They would have just given me runaround answers. But no, they would have looked no, stupid. No, but that's the whole thing. They, w I feel I like they, they actually weren't succeeded ready. in looking stupid. No, anyway. I, I, yeah, <laughs> they kind of did. But we also succeeded looking like hotheads. And they came in three of them. I guess we're jerks. They came in three of them. It's like you know what? You can have one friend, but you bring three. It's like come on, dude. Like there's then, three like, dudes. Literally, I don't know like where they came from or how long they've been doing this. Like they literally probably just got paid to sit here and take it. Now imagine this, just for context. Imagine this. Imagine that this group has been in operation and one way or another for over 10 years. Imagine that any time a Muslim <laughs> elected official oh, of or a Muslim leader of any kind is willing to go out and help other Muslims to organize. And gr granted, 90% of my time is spent on American issues. Only 10% is left over to spend on organizing Muslims who have traditionally been behind in civics and behind even in their own religious infrastructure, building mosques, building schools, yeah. right? Imagine that using 10% of my time gets me on their radar and gets a fully funded organization to stop what they're doing and try to pillory me in the public eye full time for With two no weeks. With no basis. Yeah. No, For no reason. Out of nowhere. You already no, but, wouldn't tell about but the money. He wouldn't we'll answer that them. question. We wanted to know about where his money came yeah, from. Yeah, where do you know, Nadim? Where the, who, anything right. about no, this history I, of this group I, I, in particular? John, 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 John has it. some John has some. I have some a very good, uh, yeah, yeah, I actually wrote a report on these guys. Um, so basically they get uh, the last available public, the last, the last publicly available tax record indicates that they got about $700,000 in 2013. And of that, significant portions came from a lot of anti-Muslim foundations. So, for example, this is the Allen and Hope Winters Family Foundation, the Middle East Forum. These are the groups that, for example, provide funding to Pamela Geller, uh, Daryl Yerl, David Yerl Shalmi. These are some of the most prominent and for context, for context, John's talking about Pamela Geller, who takes out uh, subway ads, and talking about it. how violent and scary it. Muslims are That's for fun. Right. You can be like, extreme her, on both her, sides. What is her, their know? motives? These groups. What are they based? She in? tries to extreme. She tries to uh, do events and and and, and things to. Uh, Get extreme responses. She for, wants the for money, right. for her own well, psychosis, for what? Again, Publicity. She's like the uh, Ann Coulter overall. of it. Sorry, John. Okay. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. The overall, the overall uh, project, though, um, as Karen understands, and this is the Center for American Progress, this is the Islamophobia. Oh, network, lovely network, them. They're well great. known, you know, well known organizations that are that are investigating these groups, including the Southern Poverty Law Center, which, which lists oh. the as a hate group in the same category as Ku Klux Klan. But basically, these people are trying to marginalize mainstream Muslims. They take a top-down approach, and they're trying to basically sever the head of Muslim leadership within the U.S. Absolutely. In order to weaken these groups from civic participation. This is why they particularly are angry at groups like the Dean's Mass Muslims or CARE, you know, Advocacy Day, where we I mean, I mean, Muslim school children to the hill to try to 
have them advocate on legislation about affordable housing. They don't want to see Muslims in civic engagement. They don't want to see more mainstreaming of So they're just racist or are they funded by somebody that like is more willing to they promote like war or there's somebody making money or somebody just racist and backwards is my question. Could be both can, actually, so the Islamophobia Network does a really great job. You can look it up, Islamophobia Network.net. Awesome. And that really outlines who the main contributors are to this the kind of media echo chamber that this falls within, the financial backing that this receives, and groups, again, like Americans for Peace and Tolerance, that have an extremely <laughs> vested and transparent it's financial very interest focus. in as, promoting this kind of hate. As someone who's like actually kind of like looked into the civil rights movements as well, it's like it's kind of um, history repeating itself as far as like, mm-hmm. you know, heads of every organization that was quote unquote anti or stat, anti status quo was always investigated and um, internally they t- tried to divide and conquer the Black Panthers. Um, like, I mean, just even the the, even the Muslim, anything. yes, exactly. The Occupy movement again internally they try to destroy it. anything that tries to go against the status quo. They just uh, the, traditionally they try to s- destroy it internally, externally. So it's just kind of like their, um, I, I guess their um, standard operating book of like procedures in regards to just doing this again, again. It's to keep us mm-hmm. distracted again, keep us from actually talking about the real issues. And totally, th- like just like Nadim said, all these issues Nadim's been working on. I mean, I want to give him cry- congratulations tonight. Yeah, I don't care. Actually, they call uh, me. By Bias to what, but on the re-election, got the most were, votes this time. You were very time. measured and, you know, didn't raise your voice too much. It's pretty, especially <laughs> since it was very personal, an attack on something. Trying to be terse, but without being angry. You know, you can refine that it's anger like, to some passion. I'm passionate just, about this issue, but I'm not angry about the person. I just think he's misguided. Me too. And like, I'm sorry. Pain, I got, I, I'm going to apologize if it seemed personal tonight to those guys. We kind of kicked kick them out. I was a little cold, but you know what? I just you were hot, had not cold. I had enough. <laughs> he, like, he's, he's, he's like taking the whole thing to just question Nadim. That wasn't the, the uh, whole thing it was us to have a conversation with him and he wasn't listening to us he was repeating the same gob- well, garbage he- and i looked at his stories and, and i was just almost didn't even want to have him in here anymore it was just yeah the fact that we i mean it was so it was such bs that the it's like do we really give them airtime i mean I how many people would even know about this or take it seriously if we didn't even broadcast it well but, they know about it because of that story on Breitbart. Yeah, but who reads Breitbart in mass in cambridge who really takes Breitbart seriously in cambridge some i'm people, like, love some to meet people them. do nationally even but you know yeah but like the, we're in uh, I know. You know. People just like having someone to quote. The fact that that's you know what I mean. It's Seriously, clickbait. it's that clickbait. dude. And it's like, like you know, I like to quote this. I Chris like Ferron to quote that. Him. It's like you know, stand by your own words, by your own convictions, dude. You know yeah. what I mean? Don't don't be like, you no, know, he said it. I, I'm just saying what he said. Yeah. You know, or that, you know. It's like yeah. you know what? No, have balls and just stand up for what you're saying. Believe in what you say, man. Yeah, we yeah. kicked them yeah. out, didn't well, we? Yeah, we did. We did kick them out. That's the first yeah. time I've ever I think kicked. Besides like Jimmy Fowler, because he was like. Just out of control, but like, and he's a friend. We love him. <laughs> it's like, no, he's come no, back like, on the show. No, he's it's the like, only one. No, it, it, and they it's decided like to leave for no, what it, it's worth. Exactly. Yeah, you're being they, hard they, on yourself. They, they, it's it's like yelling. when you, you confront someone with logic and yeah. they just keep quoting Bibles, yeah. you know, Bible quotes. Like, but no, they, like, not, like, but, but the Bible says no. Yeah. But the, no, no, but the I, Bible says. you call yourself American for peace and tolerance? It'd be like the war party. Can you imagine what we're dealing with? And what we didn't get a chance to talk about, by the way, is that we're seeing every time they run one of these articles, they put thousands and thousands of dollars of Facebook ads behind it. Advertising. I'm going to so write a story who this week. Who pays that yep. money? Like, who is putting So they get all this dark money. John was talking about some of the dark funders are, are Islamophobia, uh, zealots. Uh, are any of them on the boards of, like, think tanks or anything we oh, can actually of course. trace? So, like, so the, the network yeah, is pretty dude. vast. <laughs> John? And, yeah, and you can look up uh, the members the members of the board of directors of Americans for Peace and Tolerance, by the way. I don't believe in that kind of muscling that they were doing, but I could Jeez bring out dollars. quotes from these individuals in the most heinous anti-Arab, in the most, you know, heinous anti-Muslim. Right, right. 1984. <laughs> yeah, I just, you know, I always, just, there's just, always just a, it is. nobody does anything without in some kind of uh, motivation, and a lot of times it's money or it's, you know, Power, like what? What made these three men come on our show today? And so, I mean, they can't be that dumb. Because they believe it. They got no, money. No, I don't they think they believe it. Maybe, but it's like, about the greed. Yeah, I'm wondering who's. I think it's being. There's a guy, Charles. They Jacobs, walked out because they're not passionate enough. If they were really, if they believed in it, I think they would have stuck on and just yelled right back. Thank to, you. you. know, Charles think, Jacobs. Uh, there's a history on him on that story that we posted from Islamophobia. Right, right. That has a lot of information about, uh, like, even 250,000 in 2005. <laughs> And, and this whole network that they've created, and he's one of the main ones, and he's out of control. He's, in fact, like moderate Jewish people, like uh, rabbis, and like a whole list of them. You can yeah. see it. It's like they just are shoddy. Like every way you look, it's just shoddy <laughs> and it's a joke. And uh, we know Nadim. Well, I mean, yeah, we, we right. Know we know Medine. So when Medine. someone that we know gets called out like that, it's like we, there's no question we're going to. Uh, 
defend him. I appreciate and, you saying that, man. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I came on here not knowing what the stance was. Maybe someone reads this and, and doesn't realize um, that it's not true. And you see some of the comments, and I want to say to someone in Texas, you know, you know, that that's not what Cambridge is about. That's not what I'm about. Mm-hmm. They they give all mm-hmm. of us a bad name by doing this guilt by association thing. And not only are the accusations about us not true, they, all every single link that they are linking to is another one of those articles from a year ago, from two years ago, from three years ago. And they've been spending ten years creating a roster and a network of articles that are oh, all yeah. untrue. It's all it's all conspiracy. You talk about conspiracy it's theories. He knows this guy who knows this yeah. guy who said this one thing ten years ago. Like, and they and they <laughs> lie. Right. And that's the key. When and you when they lie. The end of the link lie. is broken and there's no, no actual story. I, I, I'm, like, I'm just gonna say no. <laughs> I, 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 I believe in conspiracies, all right? I believe in this conspiracy. I do too. No, because you know why? This country was founded on a conspiracy. It sure was. Yeah, it was the Boston Tea Party that got together and said, Yeah, yeah, the British government and then uh, yeah, yeah, don't pay them taxes no more without representation. And, and the declaration of America. In, the Declaration of Independence was like a <laughs> conspiracy. They blacked out the windows and everything. And yeah. it's a bunch of rich guys basically that decided yeah, to rich take over. Take, yeah, take over a, a country. But, do, but yeah. do you believe the conspiracy that the uh, 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 the Muslims? Are trying to take over politically and no. have one one elected official in Massachusetts, Boston area, and there's how yeah. many Muslims? There's I think there's, eight, how there's many? tens of thousands. So in, in, there's in, a lot in of Cambridge, Muslims here, we're, and there's only one. Well, but so what, 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 a big conspiracy. So what's the big conspiracy with having one Muslim? No, I guess uh, well, we, they, you know these guys clearly, hate it. They hate it. Oh my clearly god! Clearly, because one we succeeded out. out of the you yeah. know majority. Like there's one very un. It's not proportionally. They're, they're painting this picture as if anyone who gets into Muslim leadership must. Yeah. must must, by having gotten there, by knowing other Muslims, must <laughs> themselves be suspect. And what we're saying is, not only are Muslim leaders not suspect, but in fact, 99.9999% exactly. of Muslims aren't suspect. There are 1.7 exactly. billion Muslims yep. in the world. Do you think that if 1% of Muslims were violent, <laughs> we, any of us would be here? No. no 1% mm. of 1.7 billion is huge. It's a, it's a vanishingly and small number of people, and the greatest threat to America today is right-wing extremists. Yes. That is the greatest threat well, to yeah, America. It's, it's always been. You know, I've been doing this for a long time. Black churches? Just, yeah, black churches I, I, I have been blowing up? Yeah, what? What? Yeah, what? Right, what? Right, what? What? Right. We've we been blowing them up ourselves? Is that it, though? And like, here no. in the show, like who, we today, enslaved ourselves. Today, I've been doing it? this for four years. Who are we most afraid of? White I'm, men. I'm more afraid of that group that I called out today and yeah. that we kicked off the show than I'm, I am of Nadim's group. I think Believe they're all side And Nadim's a city councilor. <laughs> I'm not afraid of Nadim at I, all. He's a he's a good man. No, no, and I'm afraid no. of these guys over here. I wouldn't be afraid of them either. I would be. <laughs> they're they're, 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 they're side. Trolls. They're you side shows. Yeah, they just get people worked up. They don't have any sway in politics. No, they they but they believe in violence. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but believe in are they in the security? Security, like, are they in the military industrial complex or are they just in the, in the business are. of clickbait? Yeah, part of them. These, these yes. people have an impact on who gets elected because they're yeah. willing to spend in their within from right. within their network on who gets elected, from from within their network on who gets lobbied, and and more importantly, it takes a huge psychological toll on leaders when they pick us off For one sure. by one. For and sure. They, and not, I don't think mm-hmm. everyone has friends in the radio, friends in the media. Boston media has been so great. The last week has been about newspapers on the left and newspapers on the right saying this is crazy. Is laughing the at it. It, though. No I've been the Herald for once. Good. Thank you. Yes, and that and that is fantastic. <laughs> yeah, but thanks. not every Muslim who gets smeared in this way in the UK, not every Muslim who gets smeared in this way in this country, and I don't know who, who they all are, and I don't know who... It, it, You're not all friends. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> get but, together but after mosque. But the point is, the fact that there's an organization that is set up for the sole purpose of dragging every single Muslim no, who but, dares lead down, that's the scary part. No, that, that is scary. And I, and I am worried about it. No, no, no. Right, yeah. no, as I would... Right, I'm just... I mean that, like... I don't. I guess maybe I'm just in a place where I don't even look twice at racist claims by these sort of sideshow groups that are. Gonna but a lot of people do. Speak. That's the point, and they have a lot of money, I, and they do have followers. Look at the amount of hateful. Well, right, I know. Nationally, well, I, it's a threat to our. our we maybe do have easily. You know what we gotta do? I guess, I guess we still. That still. We gotta wrap this up. Right. And there's more what? of a there's more of a passive element as well. I mean, look, when you have a big public outcry against Syrian refugees, it's because this kind of Islamophobia has been mainstreamed. When you have a big, for example, pushback against Ahmed Muhammad, the young boy in Texas, who over the summer uh, I came the in public supported with, a, him. with a fake uh, clock and was mistaken for a bomb, and that you have an enormous public eye crowd that he's faking it or doing this on purpose, this is when this that- kind of rhetoric trickles down to the larger public discourse. So it really does have a larger toxic effect over time. It contributes to, for example, a uh, an individual coming up to a Muslim woman wearing hijab on the street, pushing her two-year-old daughter in a stroller and assaulting her and pushing down the girl while screaming, get out of here. It contributes to a fake well, man wearing a head turban getting beaten almost to death in Chicago over the summer 
while the perpetrator yelled, Osama, terror. It does. It okay. absolutely it does. does. And it's happening everywhere now. And we're going to take a break. We're going to keep this conversation okay. going. Our phone number is 617-500-7100. John, if you want to hang on the line, that would be great. Um, Nadeem's got to get out of here. Thank, thank you for thank coming you. in, Nadeem. Thank you so much for uh, broaching the topic and for giving us some time to talk about it. All right, and thanks for doing Let's your give work, man. Nadeem a Thank round of applause. Right, come in and answer it today. Nadeem represent, Nadeem. represent, I'm baby, represent. All right, so represent. Counsel. Do Thank your you job, Nadeem. baby. Represent the people. Represent the people, man. And uh, we're going to take a quick break, play some music in 617-500-7100. We're going to bring in Mike Conley, who uh, also ran for city council against Nadeem earlier this year. With Nadeem. With Nadeem. Not You're not against. With him, I guess. On a slate with him. Uh, we're going to speak to Mike. him about what he thinks about what he heard tonight, and uh, we'll be back maybe with some phone, phone calls as well. What do you think, Lauren? Sounds good. What do we got for music, Herbs? I'm going to play a little uh, Audible Mainframe there, dude, for you. Audible Mainframe. There it goes. Hey, we're live. Back. The Are Young you Jerks. Decompressing. Yeah, we get so the many people. has left the room. In the studio and on the phone. We have uh, two people on the phone. We have John Robbins from CARE. Um, and Hello. we also have a phone call, so why don't we take that phone call, Lauren? All right. Hi, how's it going? Hey, how's it going? Who's this? This is Kellen. Oh, hey, Kellen, what's up? How's it going? Kellen, you uh, got a show on uh, WEMF Radio, right? On Sundays at yeah, noon? tomorrow. Yeah, Sundays at noon. Nice. Sticky, Sticky hits. hits. Yeah. Awesome. Woo! Congratulations on your new show. Local musicians, same kind of same kind of political backing. Um, so but, I want I want to weigh in on this, um, not even from a political perspective or or a, um, a, a stoned hippie perspective. <laughs> I, I I come from a background of uh, ordained theology, so so this this touches my heart mainly because religion is such like an important thing in my life. Um, all religions, not not just Christianity or or, or Islam, but but tolerance for for each other come comes into comes into mind when when i when i hear these kinds of things um and and when i hear you know a muslim has or or an islamic um um uh, group has been uh a little bit tortured by by breitbart of all of all uh i know right um wasn't there a book called I Killed yeah. Breitbart? Yeah, by Chris Rome. I, I, I my mentioned editor. that. I was like, Chris Rome, didn't <laughs> Chris Rome kill him? Didn't he kill him, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But so, now you have to spawn a Breitbart. It's just still there. It's, it's a meme. Yeah. It's like yeah, his it's, dead. And it's even, it's dead even like, it's the, the article, too, is like really even beneath Breitbart, even. There's, no, the know. links are it's broken. Like, it's like, no, Breitbart, it's, what are you doing, man? You're, you're cheapening your brand. It's already hateful, but now this is really. Maybe rolling weak. in his grave, rolling in his grave right now. Mike, like you said, it is uh, it is right wing extremism, and um, like he said when he when he was still in the studio before he before he wimped out and got out, um, it, it is just the internet, right? And I can yeah. say anything on the internet that I want to because it is the internet. And well, you don't have to ask me my name, but as soon as I get the opportunity to go on a, a radio show, yeah, I'm going to talk about my article. Yeah, I, I might even get paid enough to lie about it to 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 give my two cents of of, of hatred and and uh, just war war mongering. It, it is it is ugly. Exactly, you know, I'm so jaded. Exactly. I swear to God, the ads on Breitbart's page, the the advertisers just they wanted more traffic so they could make a little more money. So they had this article that went a little viral, and they got a bunch of traffic, and their advertisers got more clicks, and that's how they needed to get the little cash to pay their whatever operating costs because nobody looks at right. Breitbart they, and they need to make money that's literally I'm Click so jaded bait. that that's how I think of things on the internet well that's no, how absolutely. it is that's it exactly is it's, it's like, to a game. specific group that will click on that and really get uh, hateful and excited right Look but at it's the clickbait comments. it's clickbait yeah. it's true uh, thank you for uh, weighing in and listening I really appreciate that you did that and uh, gave us that comment so do you don't think yeah, we are too much? I don't think you do you think uh, Lauren is like uh, telling me she wished she had gotten to ask more of the fair reason questions and really challenge oh, these man. clowns. I, but I got mad and I didn't think he was listening to us and answering questions and I threw him out. Do you think I was too much? Do you think Lauren's yeah. right? How do you go on that, Kellen? I, I think they were getting heated um, individually and I, I think it was time to throw them out. If not, they were going to walk out. With they it. walked um, out. You know. I don't think, I don't, I honestly don't think they could have handled much mm -hmm. more. Um, they had run through their, their, their cycle of, of, of talking points. They and, got, did what they were paid to do and they were done. In all honesty, <laughs> Mike, at that point, I've probably run through my cycle of talking points. 
Um, <laughs> but I, I think I, I would have weighed I would have weighed in a lot more had they been there in the studio still. Um, but at that point, uh, Mike Crawford is a uh, is a great name to, to stand under. It sounds like a journalist, honestly, when I hear it. So Mike Can or Mike Crawford, you're you're going to be you know the person I go to for journalism. Oh, thank uh, you, man. <laughs> thank you. you Real your talk. Name is. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank Absolutely. you for the call, and uh, thank you for listening. It's, uh, it's uh, Sticky Hits on Sunday, high noon, noon, with Kellen. And Freddie, Freddie, who's also in the studio. Say hi, Freddie. Yeah, yeah. Freddie. What's going on, guys? Hi, Freddie. How are you doing, Kellen? We'll see you tomorrow. Absolutely, brother. Freddie and like Kellen are doing uh, Sundays at noon here on WEMF Radio. Check them out, Sticky Hits. Uh, we're the Young Jerks every Saturday with uh, myself and Lauren. Pespiza. Yes, that's me. That's you. Thanks for having me, me on, Mike. Thank you, Kellen. All right, man. Hey, Herbie. Take care. <laughs> Take care. And uh, we, we, we got uh, guests in the studio, too. We got a lot of other people here, Lauren. Yeah. Uh, I want to Wait. introduce you to this other guest. I don't know if I even... Yeah, I did tell you guys he was coming in. Do you know this guy? Uh, I, I, no, actually. No, you I, don't. I, I, I barely, barely remember the other points of that message last night <laughs> that message last night okay um mm -hmm. i can totally get that mm -hmm. we have uh, a a guest in the studio who uh ran for city council uh he says i said against but you know he's really with because he ran on the same slate as nadim uh mazen uh recently uh he also uh was an aide to a city councilor in cambridge um that's how i initially met him uh his name's mike conley yeah, thanks for having me. This and he great. got a lot of oh, votes for this last city council. He almost made it. Um, you, you've been witnessing today, uh, seeing what's been going on. What do you think today? Do you have any comment on what you saw, or do you think? Uh, you know, I, I like how you opened it. I like how you, you know, just came out and acknowledged this was trash. And <laughs> I, I'm not sure if we should even acknowledge it. But then again, yeah. maybe we should acknowledge it. And I, I like how you framed the discussion, because I could see you making the decision no, we don't even want to talk about this. But then on the other hand, um, I like how Nadim was willing to very calmly yeah. and, and directly confront it. I think we ought to give Nadim yeah. a lot yeah, of Yeah, handled, give a round And of it was personal, and he handled right. it. You know, um, it, it takes something to, to be under that kind of attack um, when you really don't deserve it. I mean, even, no, if you're, he doesn't. even if you're a city councilor in Cambridge, I've worked for the city council, it's not worth it to be attacked personally on the World Wide Web, you know, uh, for being Muslim. Um, so I, I think, um, you know, a lot of credit to this show, a lot of credit to Nadim. And, you know, I think the article itself was just a bunch of trash. It's the best word I could use to describe it. Yeah, um, yeah definitely. I agree. Yeah. Obviously, I think I said that today. <laughs> I have so many words. I was like, "You're not a journalist, dude. I'm sorry." Like, oh God, no, no, no. no you know, no, when you when you're when you're telling stuff that's not true, like you have to. It, people are gonna call you on it. That's what happens. Like, <laughs> I make mistakes sometimes in my journalism. It's not that you can't make a mistake, but when you make a mistake, the world tells you you made a mistake, and you have to fix it or acknowledge it. These were egregious <laughs> These guys mistakes. are just like, <laughs> yeah, it's just, it, it's just it's trash. It was Broken really... Broken links. Yeah. No, but the, the, I think the most ironic point is like the fact that he's attacking the guy doing good work. You know what I mean? If you really yeah, were right? attacking well, someone that was really legitimately bad... Someone that got more votes yeah, this time, because he, <laughs> he, he fought the establishment, too, and like won. Like, yeah. he, he really... <laughs> No, I'm just saying, like, you know what I mean? Like, if you're going to attack someone, attack someone on legitimate reason. But, you know, wh why attack a good guy, someone that's actually doing good work yeah. in the community? He's actually, you know, out there doing things. And it's like, you know, like, you're distracting him from actually doing work. Yeah, this that's is right. not worth his time yeah. to fight these people in a way. He's busy. He's and so busy. I think in a way it's good that we are addressing it here so that if there is someone out there on the Internet who, you know, Googles Nadim and, and were to come across this this bright part article, you know, hopefully they'll come across this show or something else that will, it, you know, provide that alternative. Hopefully, we didn't just it. like give it all the SEO boost it needed to get on to stay. I thought I hope it would just trickle trickle down into like you know the third, fourth page, maybe lower. It's useless information. It's it's, <laughs> it's trash. And I doubt it. It's got a lot of views, unfortunately. Is that part of, a, is that our fault though? No, it's not our fault. Okay, it's I already. Not. I hope not. Uh, not at all. Right, right. The only thing you know I'm worried about is that they use some content from today to create some new controversy, and that's what I almost didn't if want him on here anymore. If we to them enough, and 
it, but they they lie and twist. You know what I mean? Like, so yeah. No, I know. It's just what it's just internet. Like, you yeah. Know, it's it's dumb stuff on the internet. Words on the internet. They can yeah. do a lot, and sometimes they're not worth paying attention to. Yeah. Well, like, I don't know. Like I said, I tried to say it was like 1984. The fact that he called it for peace and tolerance. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh yeah, double speed. Right? <laughs> like, really? You really, gotta do that. You know, if you if you really the war for ideas is being fought online right now. At the end of the day, when it comes to Islam in America, and so you know, really we we want to get factual information out there. We want to let people know. Well, no, these smear campaigns aren't right. Actually, what most American Muslim groups are doing is like giving money to charities or trying to help people who are victims of harassment or trying to build Islamic right. centers where people can just go and worship on Fridays in peace and quiet. Um, right. And we hope that we'll get more articles out there that say things like, you know, that the Attorney General of Massachusetts has condemned this group or that, you know, a coalition of 77 rabbis went together and condemned this group. And that actual facts can get out there rather than just these kind of smear campaigns. Yeah, the I thing see. is that I always, I really believe in hyperlinking because then hey, okay, if I'm going to make a claim, please back it up. Please go read right. the claim. Please yeah. tell me if I've done it wrong or if I've taken something out of contact. Right. I you know, believe that you have to do that 100%. As you said, if you look at these hyperlink uh, articles that these guys are putting out, if you read it, it actually often says exactly the opposite of what they're claiming. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right, no, right. it, does. it, it does. It really does. And they, they, mis like, they misrepresent it to people who don't mm -hmm. think about it. And your links really do show, like, you know, I know how hard it is to link on the internet because stuff actually in news stories goes away after a while in a lot of cases, which really stinks. Um, right. Not in every case, but in a lot of the media. I work in the media, and it happens. Some of my work, too. Um, and the problem um, that they have is that that exists for them in a lot of respects. But you're linking stuff that's there, that's shown, like the uh, the number of uh, Jewish rabbis that called their guy out. They called them out because he was going after moderate Jewish rabbis who just, you know, for speaking out in any way supportive of Muslim it was just it just re the Muslim perspective. It's just ridiculous. It's just outrageous what the, that group. Uh, just uh, any group. I mean, like I can't believe religions are still fighting. I mean, I, isn't the message love? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> you know, that's what the message was, right? Oh, y'all right. supposed to be preaching love and peace and understanding, but you know, it's and we still a, promote those wars. Yeah. yeah. I think we uh, pretty much killed it on this today. So I think uh, 617-500-7100, if anyone wants to weigh in, anyone else. John Robbins, you could stick around, but it, do you have any, um, you know, kind of uh, any comment to wrap it out? Your group is the one that's being the most attacked. Um, what do you, we do you are. have any final response to, to these guys from today? Well, at the end of the day, you know, we are the largest Muslim advocacy group in the U.S. We're obviously going to be a bigger target because we're bigger. But at the end of the day, we follow the, the injunction of the Quran to repel evil with that which is better. And so, you know, we're not going to stoop to these guys' level. We're not going to be hating them. We're not going to be responding with evil or miscomments or attacks. At the end of the day, we're going to keep doing the good work that we're doing. We're not going to let them get in our way. We're going to keep promoting civil society, positive values for Muslims. And we hope to improve American society in very, very positive ways. And we're not going to let them stop us. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely not. And thank you I for uh, weighing in today and being there the whole show. That was very helpful to have you there, thank John. Thank you for having me. Thank um, you we, for having me. We also have, uh, uh, we're still going to be talking to Mike Conley about Cambridge. Awesome. We've got some uh, issues we want to ask him unrelated to the initial conversation. But we also have some other people in the studio, uh, like Freddie, for instance, first and foremost. Freddie, uh, you've been watching today. What did you think about the whole thing? Uh, you, you, you walked these guys out like when they left you escorted them out. Was there any comment? How was that, Freddie? What did you think about today? Well, to be honest, um, you totally were asking them straight up for an answer. Uh, they were avoiding it and uh, come to the point of kicking them out. I mean, you gave the word, you gave them the benefit of the doubt. And they had to leave. Um, did they say anything to you on the way out? Were they mad yeah, at you? Yeah, how um, they act. <laughs> well, they didn't say anything personally to me, but they were, uh, they just, they just had the look on their faces like, this is BS, like, we're better than all these people, like, almost as if they didn't care, like, they clearly had a whole bunch of money to go back to. Yeah. So, <laughs> right, right, right. They're going they, back they, to the Four they Seasons. Paid. Yep, yeah. they got their paycheck. Well, apparently, though, there's some information that shows, like, really, there's only, like, one or two people got paid, and the rest of them are, like, volunteers and brainwashed. Oh, really? That's what it seems like. Well, Maybe I, I'm wrong on that, but I mean, that's how the Lyndon how LaRouche thing works. <laughs> right, how many are they, there? Those guys are reminding me of the Lyndon LaRouche people. Um, 617 500 is the phone call. 
uh, phone number, excuse me, if you want to weigh in on anything so far on the show today. Um, we also have Mike Conley here, and he ran for city council, and I know he has a lot of um, uh, he's got he's got a lot of ideas, a lot of things that he's interested in. The one we most want to ask about right now is development in Cambridge, the oh, cost yeah. of living. Yep. Yeah. What can be done? How can we actually fix this? What do you think about what Nadim's been saying versus some of the other city council candidates? Yeah, it was, it was an interesting election. You know, there was um, there were all nine incumbents ran for re-election, and after I got into the race, and after Nadim formed his uh, his slate, the the slate for Cambridge, and after uh, another candidate who I've worked closely with, Jan Devereaux, who actually won, um, and she's going to become. I like Jan. Yeah, Jan she's is great. Friend with our, she's friends with the uh, folks that we know. From Canacare doctors, actually, a couple people over there. Apparently. Absolutely, I heard through the grapevine. So you know, a number of promising candidates came forward to run, including you know, I guess I'll put myself in that category too. And then, uh, to our surprise, in early September, seven of the incumbents on the city council formed what they called the unity slate, which um, you know felt a little bit threatening, I think, to many of us who were hoping to get on. It felt like a circling of the wagons. The interesting thing uh, from the election is, though, the unity slate, these seven incumbents, not Nadim uh, and not Dennis Carlone, who I worked for in City Hall, this unity slate actually lost votes. So, um, Well, uh, they did. It was a very interesting election because six of seven, I think, won. Right. One lost. So uh, Nadim's slate, your slate, actually picked up a seat, which is a kind of a victory for you guys. And Nadim went from last to first, basically, and... and people that were elected right. so yeah it was like a one seat i mean it's not a huge difference and you could see like you said kind of the circling of the wagons which is very interesting and, yeah. and and the fact that dennis you know i don't know why he didn't like why he it weren't that many votes difference but he did right. lose by a number of votes this time but some people speculated it was about the development money that 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 he took that campaign donation and then voted with them and there yeah, was so a lot there were, of this development were, issue is a big issue right now. Yeah, two huge issues this term, and again, you know, I worked for the city council for most of this term until I started actively campaigning. Um, and the two big issues: one, there was a vote in January as to whether or not the city council should even study, not implement, but should we even study public financing of elections and campaign finance reform. And Nadim and Councillor Carlone and myself and others working with campaign finance advocates, root strikers, people who work with Larry Lessig, we brought this idea forward. Let's just talk about public financing. And that was, you know, vigorously rejected by the city council. And I think that, you know, created some divisions among the city councillors, um, number one. Then number two, there was a proposal called Normandy Twining. It's called Mass in Maine. It's that for one, a, that one. That's yeah. with Dennis Benson. I'm, I got to make sure I'm saying the last name now because uh, there's two Dennises, right? Right. Uh, Benson. And so, so Normandy Twining was a proposal for a luxury housing tower in Central Square. High end. High end. And the proponents of it said, hey, it's new housing. And those who were opposed to it, including myself, said yes it is new housing but it's the city conferring development rights onto these private wall street backed developers who will go make enormous amounts of money and what we should really be doing is looking a lot more closely at this transaction and figuring out how much more low income middle income housing can we achieve and let's use like math instead of using, say, the developer's own word. Because what the developer will say is, hey, there's not much money to be made here. We can't really do too much affordable housing. And, um, and so that was another issue where the people who seemed to oppose clean elections were also the people who supported Normandy. And then people like Nadim and Dennis Carlone and myself who were saying, let's publicly finance elections, we were also saying, let's you know let's squeeze these developers a little bit and let's make sure that they're not profiteering too much and let's make sure we're getting as much affordable housing as we can and so those two issues um for many people you know really defined what was going on in the election and 
you know, it was it was uh, it was a big election. I mean, 23 candidates, voter turn up turnout was up a little bit, and so that is good. Um, and yeah, some some big changes. I mean, it's called uh, proportional representation, but the joke is is that it's really perpetual re-election because the way you know the votes trickle around, it usually benefits incumbents. So just the right. fact that right. Jan Devereaux won, which also incidentally doubles the number of women on the council, which, which I think is, is nice. a good thing. Um, but only to two. But only to two. Um, but you know, two is better than one. Yeah, it is. And. Um, so I definitely think uh, it was a big election with hopefully some implications, you know, because what myself and others were saying was was basically we have to get ahead of this private market. Yeah. And it's gotten out of control because people can see it and feel it now, like with the just <coughs> residential and retail, yep. like, you know, the Middle East and the TTs and the whole, all these rock clubs and... Uh, just the cost of living and like people that I know who have been here for 20 years, like like people who came here from college and are in their 40s now, musicians, artists, who said they'd never leave and now they're leaving. Right. Like, you right. know, and people move right. into the North Shore, people are moving back home because they can't afford it anymore. It's just not worth it. The opportunity is not worth the cost. And when the cost is not worth the opportunity anymore, you move on, you find other places to go. And so one, one of the things that kind of compelled me to jump into the race was some work I did when I was working for the council. And so what would happen was in the context of this Normandy twining debate, people would stand up and say, well, we just got to build some housing. We have to do something to get some housing. And I'm sitting in my kitchen looking out the window and in every direction I see a crane. You know, there's a crane over here, there's a crane. And I'm like, well, we're building a lot in this city, aren't we? So I, I actually tallied up all of the building permits that had been issued in the city and what I found was in the last five years the city has built or permitted nearly 7,000 units of new housing which actually exceeds the most ambitious projections from the most you know acclaimed smart growth advocates and planners and stuff it's crazy like that. so we are building <laughs> we have a boom here we, we are building out. housing at a phenomenal rate the problem is almost all of right. it is the luxury housing it's the three thousand dollar one bedroom. Even the office space, too. Like, if you look at the office space, oh, like, gosh. there's right. nothing for small businesses. No, well, it's no. like they're all priced out. It's This is like, uh, you know, Merck. You know, it's like th those are the types yep. of businesses that are opening. It's just these huge. Right. It's unbelievable. And Cambridge is boomtown. And, like, how do we fix that? I think that something needs it's, to be done. I really do. I agree with you, Mike, on this. Places this right. Week. So the, <laughs> the, the, the simplest way to fix it, as far as I can tell, the, the most general thing that we have to start and agree with is planning you know we have to actually plan districts plan citywide as opposed to having debates about one parcel or you know right. one building because the public loses if we're making policy around one building or one parcel we can get a lot more benefits for the public if we're actually making comprehensive policy Telling the investors, to hell, 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 hell. I agree. Yeah. Is what to do. So that's, then you got to like work together and stuff. And, like, exactly, it's plan. called city planning. It's a whole community. Yeah. You trying to be an individual, trying to be like, all right, like right. you're part of the sewer system. You're part of the grid. Like you're here. Yeah. You've got neighbors, so you know, be aware of like how you're going to impact your neighbors as well. Right. So, yeah. So yeah, planning is the the most simple general answer, and then we can go from there. Yep. Isn't it interesting too? Because some of the comments that we were talking about from American Peace and uh, Tolerance, their comments. So angry against C Cambridge, it's the uh, the Republic of Cam disgusting. But then again, that's the Republic of Cambridge. Right. Lip Tides, oh, of course, People in Cambridge. Really? You know, wow. it's all about how bad Cambridge is. Cambridge is doing we so well, number one. To, uh, but number two, it's it's really uh, unfortunately it's not uh, socialistic enough. It's it's too corporate. It's too. Yeah. It's too. It's right. too doing too good. It's yeah, like, I mean, in a way, sink or swim. Like or, it's like it needs a little bit. A cream needs to come back to the yeah. people who made it. No, because they're like they're just you know they're going all completely bottom line. The, these I, people have no yeah. idea what they're talking about no. from Americans from peace and tolerance. Can we just say that? No, the, absolutely. Their audience and the clowns that they brought in today. I'll that's agree. what they are. Yeah. yeah.
No, but the idea of like urban planning and everything like that, it's like, again, like it's not all about numbers. Again, it's people that are living there, it's families and people that have like had roots there for years and everything like that. And just kind of like uprooting an entire community and then not putting that forethought into thinking like, okay, the little jobs that have been like here from the stores, the mom and pop stores to yeah. people that have been living there and doing things That's, right there in the community. It's absolutely. Like, yeah. One of the things that, you know, I'll get into when I have these discussions with city councilors is they'll say, well, you know, we have a booming high-tech economy, we have the biotech economy, we need a place to put all these high-wage workers, we're building luxury housing, what's the problem? And what I say to them is, they can't lose sight of the fact there's a lot of research that shows that for every chemist, for every software engineer that you add to your economy, you add a lot more low income and middle income service employees jobs. Service mm -hmm. jobs. who support them. They can't live. Those people can't live anywhere near here, and we have a broken transit system. Right. Yeah. And so yeah. that is the opposite of planning. Yeah, what we're so, talking about. And we want to have a lot of musicians, which we always have had in, in Cambridge and New England and Massachusetts, but we're driving them all out. Like the creative class that mm -hmm. is like underneath that, you know, in the service industry, we're driving those people out there, living further away. It's just, why are we doing this? And we could take some of the cream from the top and, and, and fix this. There's no question with all the money that's coming in here. And the value of these projects, the right. value, no, well, the it, value it, makes it so. Yeah. We can spread it out. We can fix this with numbers, with a thought. Right. You know, we talked about they're giving like 10 units, or like I mean 10% of their units to affordable housing. That number needs to be raised. No, but even especially in places that there's more value, you know. So like right. when it's mass uh, mass Ave over here in Central Square, we know that that dollar amount or right next to Harvard, it needs to be more units. Absolutely, and, and one of the more even um, subtle, you know, things that happens again. This is the opposite of planning. Planning is looking at an entire district, looking at Central Square, and saying, "What's the vision? Where do we want to go? How many?" units will be affordable to people and what happens is when the city council says to the private developer in this normandy twining thing i'll let you go to 200 feet for your luxury tower the real impact is that you spike the land value surrounding everywhere that around yep, you push people out and around. so then in the future when something happens you know next door at, at you know some other property we're now you know, affordable housing is now further out of reach yes. because the yeah. land value was yep. spiked. Now, when you do comprehensive planning, what you can do is say, let's, you know, figure out what, what's going to happen. Let's look right. into the future and let's try to develop policies that actually capture more of the wealth that's being extracted from the city. And a lot of wealth extraction is going on. It's kind of frightening to think that someone wakes up you know, on another continent, and they they have more money than they know what to do with, and they say, hmm, you know, what am I going to do with my money? I could go into the stock market, I could buy gold, I could buy commodities, and they go, oh, I know, I'm going to buy land in Central Square, that's the best thing <laughs> yeah. I can do oh, in man. the entire Concrete, world yep. with my money, yep. and that's what's uh, happening, and I think that's what, you know, people yeah, like, how people are people here. like Nadim, People like Dennis Carlo and Jan Devereaux, others in the community, comprehensive planning, those are the answers, I think. So who, who how likely, city, you know, go ahead. sorry, how do you predict that you've, like a positive, like, you know, do you think it's gonna be likely that they're gonna get more into comprehensive planning now? Um, is that something that's gonna be better at in the city of Cambridge going forward? I do, I think that, you know, the results from the election definitely have, you know, made a statement, I think. In this previous term, one of the biggest accomplishments uh, that Councillor Carlone and Councillor Mazin had was that um, we initiated a citywide planning process. And so the city is investing some $3 million in a multi-year process to do comprehensive master planning, as some people call it. And that's great. The only caveat there is lots of stuff is happening right now right. and will continue to happen and so we have to also not only work to make the master plan a success or the citywide plan a success but also make sure that what happens in the interim doesn't set us back and you got your work cut out for you then yeah it's mm -hmm. it's definitely a lot and what about these city councils that are there now like uh lee lanchung who we had in the studio uh tim toomey denise simmons um who else are we missing here? I, I, I could start listing them all. Um, Some of the old timers that have been there. Do you th do you think uh, who who who's most uh, against that idea and who's most for it or, or could be possibly pushed in that direction? 
Like, where does that stand with all of them? The incumbents. I think there were right. seven of them. I think, well, you know, I don't, I don't want to say anything bad about the incumbents, yeah. uh, <laughs> unless you really push me to. I would, um, love, I would love people to name some names here. <laughs> but um, I think that, you know, what we have to do is get past, when it comes to housing, yeah. kind of going back to what I said in the beginning, the paradigm was either you're for building housing or you're against building housing. Yeah, yeah. And if we have a housing crisis, then the answer is we just fight to build housing. Yeah. And so I think for some of these incumbents, they think that the way that you advocate for housing or the way that you help affordable housing is you do everything you can to just developer. support building new housing. Um, yeah. That's yeah. necessary, but it's not sufficient because there's all these Wall Street-backed developers right. who are more than happy to build new housing. It's just they're not going to build it for any of us sitting at this table, no, as far no. as I can tell. No. And so the question is, as a community, um, how can we change zoning? How can we implement planning? So that we kind of put those developers on notice that before you even come and put your money down on a property in Cambridge, you'll know the expectations, you'll know the vision, you can be a partner but with us. But do you us. think any of those th that I named or any of the other incumbents are the would be swayed to support that? Like, do you think I with think this so. election, like, I do think so. Any of I them that you could name that you'd be like, you know what, that person's a little better or that like. I just wonder, because I'm, I'm yeah. wondering where the sides are on this. I mean, it's hard to speculate, but I think, you know, me personally, I ran, you know, aligned with Dennis Carlone, yes. Jan Devereaux, like Nadim you. Mazin, and um, I came roughly, you know. Close. Close. It was, you know. You were very competitive. Yeah, if the wind blew a little yes, differently, maybe it, it would have been and different. If one person was in the race, so, there's a, a lot of candidates. Yeah, so I had kind of a campaign wrap-up party um, with many of my supporters this week, and one thing I said to them is, hey, when there's a tough vote in this new term, if someone isn't on the right side of it, go tell them, hey, Mike Connolly almost won and he can <laughs> run again, so maybe you should vote you know, the way we're asking you to. So I, I think that there could be some, some influence from this election where some of the ones who were on this unity slate will think to themselves, you know, I need to really understand what this other side is saying and not just reject it. Any names that you would indicate that you think might most right. likely be the ones that would right. do that? I'm, well, in this case, I'm not actually, so I'm not trying to be cagey. Yeah. I mean, I don't actually you don't know. know. Uh, I, I don't quite fine. know. That's fine. Yeah. Um, well, do you we'll want to name any um, NGOs that you're working with uh, on this issue? Um, well, there's, there's the Cambridge Residents Alliance, who took a real leadership role this current election. They endorsed myself and Nadim mm -hmm. and Dennis Jan and one other uh, young man, Romain Waite, who um, also ran a very strong campaign. He did. And he did. He definitely did. Absolutely. And, and so certainly I think the Cambridge Residents Alliance has done a lot. You know, they've now you know, work to help elect three city councilors. They've only been around for three or four years. And like oh. a stable of you that were really close. I mean, that's the whole thing. There was, right. there was a number of you. There was a lot of votes there. So it's very interesting. I mean, would you, are you, th yeah, you probably won't consider it now, but you may in the future run again. Yeah, I'm totally open to it. You know, I think um, I'd love to serve on the city council. It's definitely been, I've been working on these development issues day in and day out for almost four years now nice. and i'll tell you they're complicated i mean we're talking it, this is the devils in the details yeah. so this is zoning proposals that are dozens of pages for an individual parcel and they're setting precedents for future proposals so there's a lot of work that goes into it so i feel as if i have acquired a lot of knowledge and a lot of relationships so i'd love to figure out you know either running again or in some other capacity. Well, I think on this show, like you can come in and be our development guy, like I will. Boston, yeah, Cambridge, yeah. Somerville, and when something comes up, Absolutely, you know, bring yeah, the prison live, stories. I don't live too far away, so I'd be happy to Perfect. come in and, and talk about it whenever. Yeah. Awesome. On call. Oh, awesome. Nice. Expert. <laughs> so yeah. as far as the devil's being in the details, like um, when they do this parcel splitting of like, okay, the high luxury building and the 10% low income housing, is there a different material used even for the low income housing <laughs> in the building? <laughs> is it a separate entrance and exit for the low income people? Yeah. Yeah. That's a fantastic question. You might have heard in New York, there was the big controversy about really? the poor door. Oh really? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, really? I, I didn't think they did that. I don't think they, I didn't the think black they did folks that. Would, yeah, no, well, I don't please. think they do that in Massachusetts. They don't, yeah. I think that's in New York, a lot of buildings, that's what they were doing. Uh, yes. A lot of luxury buildings, yes. No. Yeah, it, it, was, uh, it happened in New question, York. Rhodes. Great question. And it's actually, you know, there isn't a simple answer. I mean, think about it this way. The, the current 
ordinance in the city of Cambridge basically requires that when we do this inclusionary housing, and that's what we're talking about, you know, 80 or 90 percent is luxury, 10, 15 percent is so-called affordable, so -called, yeah, what even is affordable? though it's, it's not necessarily affordable <laughs> No, because even the paperwork that you have to fill out to be in the affordable housing, and sometimes it's like the, the way that they have the numbers, that you are too rich or you're too poor to right. even afford it. You have to be a specific kind and of And they're like hard number. to get. Yeah. Um, it's, it's difficult. Yeah, and there's very narrow yeah, there's ranges. Much. So yeah. you could be too poor, you don't qualify. Yeah. Or you could be, you know, just solidly, too much. Yeah. solidly middle income, unable to afford you, anything. You can't get anything. No net worth, and, and you just and make you a little too much. much. Yeah. So coming back to your question, the inclusionary zoning ordinance in Cambridge does require fully, you know, comparable, equal, the same in the luxury housing and in the affordable housing. But I do say that is somewhat of a complicated question because I sit here and wonder. You know, if it's real luxury, you know, if it's oh, like no. if it's marble and brass and stuff, you almost wonder, you know, are there other ways to actually house more people in a reasonable way, if you get where I'm going with that. Yeah. So Absolutely. Yeah, I do. So there are, you know, super complicated things here, but generally, yeah, it is all equal and I think generally that's good. I don't think we should have like poor doors and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's real luxury, a lot of these places. They just look like hotels on the inside. That's yeah. the only difference. It is. There isn't like nice, beautiful swimming pools or like saunas and all yeah. them. They're just attached to gyms you can get a membership to. Yeah. Well, like, <laughs> that, come, that brings up another great point, which like, is that a lot of the building that we're doing now, it's, it's as if they're thinking like 20 years or 30 years might be like the life of the building, which is insane. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? That is at yeah. the absolute antithesis of sustainability. Or they're in the Airbnb game, right? right. Like, yeah. And they're like sort of renting it out for long term or like short term and nobody really lives there permanently and they're just sort of... Well, there's a lot of buildings like that in New York, yep. you right. know what I mean? Where it's like it's all foreign investors and again, the people that actually are living in the building are just their short term rentals and stuff like yeah. that. And so here's sort Space of... Space in Boston, New York, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and here's, here's kind of the biggest thing, uh, and this was really my leading um, priority in the campaign, there is no, you know, we're talking about all the, this is a great conversation we're having. There's lots of like details. There is no housing plan in the city of Cambridge. If you went to city hall and you said, you know, what's the plan? How, how we have no plan. How we just approve anything, especially if it has money and a good plan. Unless someone argues in <laughs> right. the right way at the right day. Yeah. And so right. there, if you were to ask how many units do we want to build? No urban planning whatsoever. No, 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 no. Pretty much not. I mean, they had, they approved this master plan. They're studying it, but there's been some feedback on it, pushback on it. It's, there's really no plan until this whole thing has started recently. It's the truth. Oh, good. I mean, it's glad it started then. We, uh, yeah, so the, <laughs> it, it was a Someone's fight. On it. it was an economy. It was a fight, and it was an accomplishment. I wish you well on this, yeah. and, and I think you're doing great work, Mike. Um, Thanks, I Mike. voted for you. You were one of my top votes on the ticket, too. I did vote for a, a lot of uh, y y your slate. I also did vote for some of the establishment slate, because I felt like you know people need to work together a little more, and hopefully they will get together and... But your win, I was very excited about it. That you know, I wish it was a little bigger, but right. I think it was a it, it was a win. It was definitely a win. This election for the reformers, and uh, I hope you keep doing it. I hope you come on the show. Love um, to. Yeah, yeah, I mean, for sure. I think you brought us a lot of good info, right? Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, this is a nice, like, balanced conversation. It's nice juxtaposition. I didn't like my yelling half. earlier. Did you? I mean, it was their yelling too. I don't it was, really. It was, it was really tense. It wasn't just you. It was early, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. It I just, mean, before we even was, like, I didn't even dare to talk to start my own show. No, no, it was straight on. Like, oh man, these guys, why are they here? And then like these guys were like, whoa, the same answer for every question, and like it was very just. It was uh, weird. Yeah, we, yeah, man, I feel like, man, it's... Uh, we earned it this week. I'm tired just watching this. We're going to have to do something after, smoke something. I know, right? I'm thinking, yeah, I need yeah. to... Medical? Yeah. Who's got the medical? <laughs> <laughs> Who brought it this week? Well, I'd Sarah, like to... Sarah uh, Michelle is also here. Oh, hey. hey. I want to know if she has any cons. She's going to get in front of a microphone. She watched this whole thing, too. Um, <laughs> Herbie, you, you're back there, too. What did you think about this whole thing today so far, this show? Been here week after week. This was unlike any of our other shows, really. Yeah, today was a little unique, man. <laughs> It was intense. I thought, you know, I thought it was really going to fall apart. Uh, I'm, I'm very sorry. I'm familiar with the, with the articles that they wrote, man. I kind of want to like get um, into, it. into it. Yeah, yeah. I Could you feel the, the tension today? There was a lot of it, man. And plentiful. Yeah. Everyone just dug in their heels real fast, man. She's not coming out. Why? Why? Well, you don't have any comment on? No, she doesn't want to comment. I think everyone's already commented. So, what? What's up with that? Can we give her a hard time about that, Rhodes? Sure. 
She's the she's, non-talker. She's exactly. The magician in the why back. you're not being represented? Like, women, no. Like here, you get you have a chance to speak, and you're just letting Lauren take it all over. <laughs> no, you're, you're pitting the women against each other. No, I mean, now no you're, dude, that's my girl over there. Yeah. I know what so I'm you saying. Can try. Just, you can't do that. No, mm. I, I wasn't even. Now like, you're in trouble, Rose. That's, I'm not yeah. trying to pin them against each I'm other. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to set a player up. I was just encouraging her to actually get up on the mic, and I was saying, oh, using I mean, Lauren as an inspiration. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, that's all I was saying. Oh, he's Please. talking his way out of it. Six one seven five hundred seventy one hundred. He'll do it. <laughs> We're the Young Jerks. We're every Saturday at six p.m. And uh, my name's Mike. I don't know. Mike Can? Mike Crawford? Mike Crawford. Uh, this Mike is C. gonna be on Mike C. Issue. Mike no. Mike C. Mike Crawford Can? Mike Can Crawford? Mike Can Crawford. I like Mike Crawford Can. Mike Crawford Can. I like which, that too. Which account has more followers on Twitter? I don't know. Like just they, I have like Mike Can Boston. I got Mike Crawford. We got the phone number. I got I, I multiple accounts. They're all got a lot. Okay, I'm gonna do the Take math the right phone now. Call. I'm gonna look Who's at on it. the phone? Uh, actually, why don't we? Should we take a break? Should we play one song and then come back with a caller and end the show? Why don't we do that? Sure. We've been talking for a while. Yeah, sounds good. Yeah. That's why I heard. You got a song lined up for like three, four minutes and we'll come back and... Yeah, why don't we do that? Coastal communities. What do you got? Encinitas will be having its uh, first ever mayoral oh, wow, election you got ads. this fall. Oh, ads. Ads. What's this? Some, some ads. No. I thought you were going to play a good song ads? No, no, no. Oh, those are my favorite. No, 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 no. Here you said, let go. me we, find a song for you. We got till Tuesday, man. Oh, till Tuesday. All right. We're back live. Yeah. The Young Jerks. Wayne for you. Yeah, yeah. Is I, I, I said, going to yeah. do it? Or is Rhodes? Uh, yeah, we're well, the Young Jerks. Rhodes, Rhodes, Rhodes. Yes. <laughs> this is Rhodes Pierre. Oh, boy. Uh, and this is Lauren <laughs> yeah, over here. Yeah, this is Lauren over here with the Young Jerks, and we're basically wrapping up the show. It was really exciting and kind of uh, stressful and then kind of nice, and now we're just kind of ending it. <laughs> so a couple more it's issues we want to touch on. kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nice now. It's nice. There's more. Is it nicer now? It yes, is. Yes, it is. I'm like, I'm like, I'm like breathing deeply now. It's like chill. And, and it's nice. It's <laughs> nicer. Yeah, we don't have a bunch of racists in the room. It's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> and we have uh, a phone call. Oh yeah, let's take it. Oh, you know who we have on the phone? We I'm... have the former co-host. Yes. Frank Capone. The man. Hello. What's up, Hello. dude? Hello. 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 I haven't heard from you in a while. What do you? What the hell you been doing? Yeah, you got two you kids, and uh, you've been listening to the show, maybe. Yeah, I've been listening to the show for doing the family thing, you know, being a dad and all. Wow, nice and, job. Uh, we missed I you in today. I mean, wow, crazy. I miss you guys too, but. My goodness, where, where, where'd you find those people that you had on today? Breitbart.com, <laughs> <laughs> advertising on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, right, Breitbart.com. <laughs> when they, when they... Breitbart.com, I mean, what a, what a den of vipers. I mean, I was amazed. I mean, I know Nadim personally, and I saw the headline, and I was like, wow, what is this crazy, <laughs> crazy you know, shit. red meat nonsense you're going right. to sling against my friend Nadim? And, uh... I mean, I just was was shocked by the whole thing and and the the disrespect you know that these people have and 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 this kind of like authoritative tone they oh, take gosh. as if they know what they're talking about. Oh, you're so, yeah. if you it's, disagree, and it's lies. It's almost like talking to like a liberal, only <laughs> a crazy Republican. Yeah, yeah, well, they're extremists. Oh, they're absolutely extremists, and they're over there trying to say the an extremist when I know him to be somebody that is about building coalitions and building bridges and yeah. having worked with him on you know different committees and stuff like that and Occupy. I know the kind of person he is, and I mean, told, I mean, he should sue them. I mean, that's 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 that's. He character. was mad at that's me today right too, Frankie. Right he like yelled at me after he wrote me a note on the way out. I forgot to tell you, he wrote me a note. It said, uh, uh, "Oh wait, he had a couple of notes, but he said, I'm sorry I gave you a hard time!" Exclamation point. Because he did yell at me, but I, I was like totally like, those guys are still, you know, we were walking up to the right, studio, right. and I didn't want to let the cat out of the bag yet, because I had to do this whole thing, but I was like, you know, I was with Nadine, <laughs> I was with him from the get-go, like, so, you know, like, I just felt like maybe I went too far by having those people on. Do you think we should have even had him on the show today? Do you think no, we handled no, it appropriately? It, do you uh, think we went too far by yelling at them? How did it sound? Because we didn't hear it at home. No, I mean, you probably should have showed him out the window rather than <laughs> what it is, but, um, I mean, other than that, <laughs> no, I think it's good. I think it's a Violence, Frank, really? That, well, I mean, you know, sometimes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Frank, you're going to get in trouble. You also, not everyone knows knows you like we do. <laughs> That's all right. It'll be okay. I don't want you to get visited <laughs> in it again. <laughs> <laughs> Six one seven. No, what, what, what are you supposed to do with animals like that? You know what I mean? Those people are like rabid dogs. To quote Ben Carson, 
They I really mean, were. <laughs> <laughs> I, <right? laughs> this is the Frank I love. I'm dying over here. We're this, 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 like, that's what Ben Carson know. actually said about Muslims this week. I mean, <laughs> this is what we're dealing with. So let's have a laugh yeah. with it. That, that was awesome, Frank. <laughs> I mean, that's because that's who you're dealing with. But I know. I mean, I, I I think that it was good. I think I understand. You know, you had to be a little secretive about it to get them both in the same place at the same secretive. time. Secretive! <laughs> Maybe a little bit. Yeah. How did you know me, Frank? You know me too well. Hey, you know what you're going to do. It's good radio. You know, it's, 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 and, it, and it just shows to the people's character that they, the only way that they know how to communicate is, is you know, by throwing these, uh, these, you know, toxic talking points and yep. trying to associate and deal with, with all these extremist organizations yep. that, that Any I know dude, like I said, and that's not that's not who he is. That's not what he stands for. Yeah, because if he was, you and I would be the first ones calling it out on it. Like we've had Absolutely. experience with this guy, and we we we, won't, we wondered it for us too. But we like we were very suspicious of a lot of people, especially successful people, like you know <laughs> politicians. And no, he's no, the real no, deal. Not, he's not real. That, yeah, you know? not that. Like definitely yeah. nothing like that. That's so. Sure. Right, Frank? Yeah, no. Ah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. We came from, like, the Ron Paul libertarian world at one point. You know, just, just buried head in the sand paranoia. <laughs> <laughs> Get a bunker, man. Hey, I'm selling uh, the water filters. What are they, uh, Berkey? That's, some, that's right. I got a couple extra bucks to take you tangerine if you want. you're running low. And the like bunker. Some... I'm, I'm selling bunkers now, too. Yep. $100,000. Buy a bunker for me. I got an acre worth of seed in this little tennis ball. <laughs> you can a whole acre with it. He's got a lot of products, Alex Jones. <laughs> oh, that guy's great. I mean, he's a genius. Oh, he's yeah. He's, he's, a, genius. he's a genius. He's a genius. He's a genius. genius. I love it. I Bill love it. Bill Hicks. I mean, That's he's a... like he's he's like you know the he's like the Ric Flair of conspiracy theory. Oh, dude. <laughs> he really is. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> You're killing me to that. You know, uh, after all the hot hot like. The, the tenseness now I'm just laughing I'm just you're killing us Frank me That's especially crazy. I don't know how we're gonna end the show here well, I mean, you guys should talk about, um, you know, Mike, you like the wrestling over there. The, <laughs> apparently now ISIS is, is threatening to attack Survivor Series down in Georgia. What? What? Ooh. Yeah. No way. You didn't hear about that? Yeah. No. So ISIS, it's uh, uh, rather anonymous, is doing this um, yep. op Paris intel yep. thing. And so basically they uncovered um, chatter between ISIS members about some attacks that were supposed to happen tomorrow uh, in Italy, in Lebanon, yep. in the United States. Um, That's few, really the, tough. The, actually, the Vatican in Italy, a, a five-finger death punch concert in uh, in Milan, which, you know... Right, big events. I mean, they should just cancel that because they're terrible. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I don't even know. I have no idea who you're talking about, but okay. Five-finger death? Yeah, no. no, and so there's a bunch of supposedly attacks, and now the FBI has responded and saying that um, they're taking the, the threat, you know, seriously and that they're going to be looking at it and so big news coming out from yeah. anonymous, thanks, anonymous making things happen i'm happy yeah good job I'm, guys I'm, yeah, they've no. always been very serious on their uh yeah. threats or whatever well, they're gonna they i say hope they everyone's don't safe like people who limit free speech and they don't really like bloody violence i mean there's a lot of things anonymous doesn't dan doesn't doesn't stand for you can argue it's like not it's you know can be broken down by whoever feels like putting on the mask but, um, well, that's the thing is that you yeah. don't know who anonymous really is. Yeah, you is. can't I mean, really trust it, unfortunately. No, you, could, you can't. But it can be valuable. I've been, you know, I've been involved and not involved, and I've like yeah. seen them do awesome, cool stuff. I've seen awesome stuff come together through anonymous, and I've seen some like dumb stuff come together too. Yeah. So it's like I'm so detached from it now, but um, I hope that if this is a bunch of people with the spirit of freedom in their like m intentions, like I wish them nothing but success. Me and too. Stay Me safe well. out there. Me too. And, and like, yeah, you know, the whole anonymous movement is huge. I mean, even Edward Snowden, he's not part of anonymous as far yeah, as I know, but he's kind of with that movement We're in, in all spirit. We're of, of the same mm. cloth. Yeah. <laughs> and, and your friend, uh, Lauren Barrett-Brown, who's, yeah. who's in federal jail right now. Yeah, yeah. We, they have a love-hate relationship, but at the end of the day, he was one of, one of them. He so. did a great work, too. Like he, like, I, I liked what he exposed through uh, he was a great some of those journalist. companies, those defense he got companies. Guys, he got guys that he was, um, he managed to call them up and talk to guys that were avoiding him, 
and get and them to... is. Let's say is. I don't want to say was. He, he is. He still is. writes, he's he's still still writes a weekly continues. article in Vice called the Barrett Brown Review of Arts and Letters in Jail. In jail. Where he, yes, he writes his uh, dispatches on in his federal life in prison. Jail. Yeah, in federal jail, as well as book reviews with books people send him. And he's quite witty and still has I think has he's like together. the next... This is my thing. I, I look at Barrett like the next Hunter S. Thompson. Like, he's that kind of style for a new generation. Yeah, he's pretty gone. So he's jail. pretty... A lot, of, a lot of big words and, you know, a lot of... you got to be pretty smart to follow his references, but if you are, he's hilarious. So... Thanks, Frank, for calling mm -hmm. in. You got us. Hey, you got us opening up me. and just talking freedom and the yeah. things that we are into. You know. You know. I know. You know, you're following all this conversation right now, and a lot of other people that we know get it. What we're talking about, right? Hell yeah. 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 Thanks for calling in, bro. Hey, I'm glad you're doing good. Thanks for having me. I hope you think the show sounded great. What up, Herb? What up, guy? I don't know. Exactly. What up, Lauren? Hey. Say hi to Mike <laughs> Conley. Say hi to Frank Capone, and Mike Conley. Oh, hey, Mike Conley. Hello. Hey, how's it going, Frank? It's going well. Good to hear. It's going well. I uh, I wish you best of luck in your next run there if you do it again. All right. Thank you. Absolutely. Well, hey, guys, take care. Good you show. Too, man. Man. Yeah, nice to hear from I'll you, man. Nice to hear from you, Frank. See you, dude. Take care, Frank. Maybe I'll see you guys soon. Take Come care. Come visit, right. yeah. With the Young Jerks. That was a good show. Yeah, it was. That was yeah. fun. I have no idea what we're doing next week. Oh, once you know what, we'll figure something You'll out. You'll surprise yeah. us again. Oh, yeah. We got mm -hmm. a lot of plan, like a lot of things upcoming, and, uh, I don't know. We didn't even talk about like some of the stuff in the uh, news stories we put out. I put out recently. Oh yeah, and right. some of the other stuff going on. But there's a lot going on. We're always around it. You never know what we're gonna do. But this was a great. I think it was a great show. Uh, even though we, for the first time, had a guest walk out of the studio. Whether yeah. he was forced forced out or. It was I mean, I don't, yeah, it was kind of mutual. The word was <laughs> given by the boss, and yeah. they were showed up. Freddie, Freddie, I, I put you in harm's way. Like, you, you got three guys. You're escorting them out. Were you worried at all? Nah, man. I, you know, I felt probably a little bit bad, but you gave the word. That was it. You know, I said, all right, everybody out. I, I was gonna let Freddie handle it, but I'm six foot eight. You would have killed him. Three hundred pounds. I should have asked I you. Was actually, gonna, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I had your back, Freddie. Don't worry. Oh no doubt. I doubt they're they're gonna it. do but anything. But I knew you could handle it. So they're not paid enough. Yeah. They, they they were just maybe a little bit sad. That's all. You earned your young jerk stripes today. I'm yeah. Yeah. definitely yeah. Freddie. Oh, honorary I, I, jerk. Yeah. You guys are awesome. I appreciate that. Thank you, Mike. And, and your show you. tomorrow, uh, Sticky Hits. You guys know what you're doing tomorrow. You're just hanging out. What's going on? Uh, we have a couple more um, really awesome sweatshirts to give away by the Witch Doctor. Ooh. Rhodes will also be in the house. Um, Dan Epstein of the Northeastern Institute of Cannabis um, would like to come by. We'd love to have him. Good dude. Um, and then another friend and mentor of mine um, who works in the uh, ancillary business uh, may be here, here as well. Um, he works at a hydroponic retailer. Uh, great guy. And um, we're just going to be us, really. That's yeah. sticky hits awesome. at noon. It's going to be high noon. Lots Worth of waking sampling. Up for. Lots of tasting. You're going to do some tasting more <laughs> than you do here? Uh, well, is absolutely. it more fun there than here? Right? I don't know. This is my first time I've been invited. We'll have to, we'll have to talk to, um, to Mike Clinton as well. We'll have to get him on mm. there. Cool. We're WEMF Radio with the Young Jerks. We're every Saturday at 6 p.m. Rhodes, you got anything you want to promote? You're a comedian. You got things going at Can Kid Doctors. Oh, no. The Can Kid Doctors are definitely come down for um, your evaluation if you're thinking of becoming a medical marijuana patient. And um, just, you know, stay in tune to different things that are going on with the laws in regards to um, hopefully in 2016 we get it legalized like a tomato plant. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, the tomato plant model. I'm still hoping. Keep my We're hoping crossed. for that. Knock on wood. I don't think it made it. Well, still not the other. The other initiative looks good. A hundred thousand cigs. We're still not well, sure. Could, yeah, right. I don't know. I, we'll I, find I, out. We'll we'll be on top of that. We'll get back to that in the next couple of weeks. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. I wish to. I, it's really stinks that it's probably not going to be that yeah. way, Rhodes. Well, but we did our best. We, you know, we yeah, did. Yeah. Maybe we'll do go. We'll do what Ohio did and reverse it, and then go back till we make it right. Maybe <laughs> at the state house, yeah. or even the interim before it even passes. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, never know. Because yeah. I, I mean, on, the Globe did say it was the better initiative. Yeah. That's true. I think it's on everybody to just vote what they feel is best, and yeah. Yeah. just it's that time just to yeah. let that go. Yep. We're looking forward to that next year. It's going to be a great election, 2016. No matter which side of the coin you're on, 
And well, I, I mean, patients should have the right to grow their own medicine, you know. I mean, and even if, if they did go with the alcohol model, I say people are allowed to buy home brewing kits. Well, at least you'll have your 12 plants. That's yeah. the best thing yeah. I think about the mm -hmm. initiative. Yeah, that's it does true. with the alcohol one. They got 12 plants. It's awesome. Yeah. Um, but I want to talk about, uh, you know, even the election more, too, going forward with this whole Donald Trump thing. And, you know, oh, geez. there's so many angles we could be going at it. But uh, we'll see. We'll, we'll see what we're doing next week. Everyone stick around. 617-500-7100 is the phone number. Put in your phone right now. Like us on Facebook, Facebook uh, slash The Young Jerks, J-U-R-K-S. Invite your friends. That, that's how you can really help us. Yeah. Invite all of your friends, especially the ones that you know are interested in uh, news, politics, activism, anything like that. Yep. Like they us don't on have Facebook. To be local. Yeah, yeah, younger people, the internet. Yeah, the internet. Anonymous. They, yeah, anonymous. We we love Weed. you guys. Like us on <laughs> Facebook. Well, anonymous kind of took down my PlayStation Network over Christmas, but you uh. guys are, are awesome. <laughs> I, I do I do like so. Well, you know, that was fake anonymous. So <laughs> uh, yeah. We'll go with that one, yeah. This is and not the uh, anonymous you're looking for. <laughs> yeah. And when you invite your friends to the page, they will thank you later, I guarantee yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. We are They'll be like, I'm glad I found the young jerks. People yeah. say that yeah. all the time. We fill a hole in lives. That yes, just, we do. We're, we were missing, like, you know, and then they find us, and then they feel happy. I know there were a lot of listeners this week. We were checking it out. People were going crazy. It was totally, yeah. It was they were saying stop yelling at one point, some of our friends said. <laughs> was I yelling? Uh, you were yelling. You were, there was a little bit of raised voices. You know? Was I yelling, Herb? Yeah, there was a little bit of yelling going on. <laughs> just a little bit. Laura was trying to just be nice now. She's like, a little bit, just a little bit. I mean, you know, it's just like there's different strategies in dealing with um, crazy people or paid off people. or And I was basically just trying to figure out where these individuals before me actually stood on that spectrum. And it's difficult, too, because in the studio we have, we kind of just let everyone sit down at the same time. Yeah. And ideally, we would have you know broke it up a little more. But uh, I was just like, when the guy's not acknowledging me and just getting trying to get to Nadim. And it's like, no, no, you came yeah, in to be right. interviewed. There's, there's I'm some, interviewing you about your hit on. piece, and you're not answering the questions. You're throwing questions at Nadine. Right, right. That's when I've had enough, because yeah. this is my show, our show. Right, then that's that's, our, that's Turfie's now, show. like, stepping over his And that's his really when station. I really lost Yeah, that's, that I was is already true. mad. But he was quite rude. He was quite rude, and, and he was getting a little bit too, like, uh, comfortable. Well, yeah. that's the thing. Like, he had a microphone. He was like, I'm just going to say what I need to say. That's all. I don't keep asking these questions to Nadine. Yeah. It's like, no, that's not really what we're here yeah, for. We're answer, here to answer ask yours you questions first. and you're here to answer them. <laughs> right. Answer yours first. <laughs> and then he was talking on behalf of, really, is this the way you guys are going to conduct the yes, interview? Yes, that's and, the way we're going to do it, dude. And you're going to be out of here. Right. <laughs> that was, it was fun, though. We were recapping it too much. We got to go. We're over time. Yeah. And uh, we'll, we'll be back next week, right? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. We hit our mark. We did. We'll be back. We got uh, lots of things upcoming. I did. I did we show you yet, Lauren and, and Rhodes, the new T-shirt that we're looking at? Ooh. Have you seen it yet? I haven't Lauren's seen it. gonna. I mean, uh, Sarah's probably gonna show it to you. Sarah Michelle, she's got a. Um, I definitely. It looks really good. We like it. It's going to be a nice T-shirt. I have not seen this. Out. Oh my goodness! Yeah, you're going to get my live on. We're going to have to know if it's good. Like I, I, I we'll, we'll figure it out after. We'll we'll show okay. everyone. Okay. Okay. Yeah. T-shirt will make its debut. Oh, oh here it is. Sarah's got is it. it. Oh, like a new, wow. Is there a new graphic on it? Like, <laughs> no, it's it's very there. You'll see. It is pretty funny. Oh, it's funny? Oh, Sorry. nice, dude. That's cool. Some people like it already. So we're working on things. we got all kinds of things in the, in the works. I love it. Continue to support us and like us and follow us. We'll be back every week, every Saturday, like we said. Actually, I was even going to say we might even take off next Saturday. I keep saying we're coming back. Maybe we might not. Maybe we'll, we'll decide. All right. Saturday after Thanksgiving. Yeah, maybe mm. for once. Oh, yeah. All right. Maybe, you know. It's up to the show. We could pre-record. We, we haven't taken a week off in forever, and maybe we will. Right. But uh, no matter what, we'll be back. Keep doing the show, whether for it's real. next week or in two weeks. <laughs> it only mm. gets better. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you for everyone. I want to give uh, everyone a round of applause. Our crew mm -hmm. especially. Herbie. Crespo, Mike Nashawati, Ryan Spalding before us, Lauren Pespiza, the co-host, kicking ass today. And uh, Rhodes, thank you for being here. Mike Conley, a guest, Nadine Mason. Uh, thanks for the turkeys for being turkeys that came in. And for uh, the phone <laughs> calls that we got, they were excellent. Kellen, yeah, uh, thanks. Freddie for being here, Sarah, Michelle. Yeah, Freddie for uh, escorting our friends to the door. Yes, happy or, or tur happy turkeys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, great experience here getting to meet Nadim uh, as well as you Mike Connolly oh thank you Brady. I appreciate it dude thank you hey, sticky hits new time absolutely <laughs> welcome you anytime man I'll check it out you know, I, I want to call you Big Mike man thank uh, you yeah, yeah Big Mike that, we that's what everyone calls me so no, that's cool, cool. it's an old name I guess yeah Big well, Mike 
Oh, it's good to have you as a representative. I know you're not officially the count, you know, on the city council and everything, but it's he's our information. No, he does a information representative. Yes, he gets yeah, us the info some... reporter. This, yeah, absolutely, you're on our show now, Micah. You know, yep, there's yep, uh, that was some uh, valid, you, valuable information. You all know this. There's a pending zoning ordinance to have a medical marijuana facility in Central Square. So yeah. Yeah. Big debate that the city council will have to decide. I on. didn't know that. Yeah, it just came <laughs> up recently. Um, Mil- I did not. I think I'm not sure on the name. I think it's called Milford or Medford Medicinals. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that might be a topic that. of a future show. Definitely yeah. will be. I'm We'd sure love it will to talk be. To them. Thank you. <laughs> awesome. Get, get, get a, if you have any, oh, I'm getting all excited because <laughs> we already helped uh, the ones in Boston and, and right. Cambridge in the past, but it didn't work out, so we didn't know about this new one. Send me the link. We'll yeah, be on yeah. that. Definitely. Yeah, We're basically the deal is, as you probably do know, the city zoned, yep. they zoned North Point and Alewife, yep. which are both you know fairly out of the way, yeah. mm-hmm. as the only places where a uh, facility could be. could be located. And so this group has come along, and they've asked the city to change that to allow them to be in and Central. That's what- and so it's it's an open question how the city will decide it. Well, so. I think a lot of it's going to be decided like the old one, um, John uh, from the, from uh, Greenway went around to all the neighbors in that neighborhood right. to get them on board. And once they were all on board, the city went along with it. Um, it's going to be probably harder to do in Central Square, yeah. but that's what they have to do. If they have real opposition, they're in trouble. So we'll be we'll definitely be all over that. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. Talking to the right neighbors. around the corner. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I would love to see it in Cambridge. It needs to happen. Yeah. Right? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Very cool. They put it where TTs used to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, there's a new club going in there. Right. The Middle East is running a new room over there. But we got to get out of here. We've been saying that for like 10, 20 minutes now. We got Herb on overtime right now. Right, Herb? You got to go home. We got to eat. Overtime, baby. Woo. All right. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see everyone when we see you in an, in an upcoming Saturday. How's that? Sounds And uh, Sounds coming great. up next is uh, Fresh Weed at 8 p.m. in like 15 minutes. <laughs> and then... Uh, we got Twisted Dream Radio coming up after that. So stick around. Keep listening to WEMF Radio tonight. See you later. Do you need a medical marijuana recommendation like I did? Do what I did. CanacareDocs.com. Compassionate, compliant, and confidential. Go where I went, Mike can, to get my medical recommendation in Massachusetts. CanacareDocs.com. If you're suffering like I am from back pain, or maybe you have MS, post-traumatic stress, seizures, AIDS, cancer, glaucoma. If you're suffering from pain like I am daily, call CanacareDocs.com. It's a much safer way to go. No opiates. You want medical legal cannabis? CanacareDocs.com. Convenient, nine Massachusetts locations, Peabody, Quincy, Waltham, Brockton, Stoughton, South Dennis, Cape Cod, Fall River, and Worcester. Also, I forgot, Seekonk, also in the states of Delaware, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Maine, and coming soon to New Hampshire and New York, it's CanacareDocs.com. Get your medical recommendation, get legal, CanacareDocs.com.